This is the Meat Eater Podcast coming at you shirtless, severely bug bitten, and in my case, underwearless. We hunt the Meat Eater Podcast. You can't predict anything. The Meat Eater Podcast is brought to you by First Light. Whether you're checking trail cams, hanging deer stands, or scouting for elk, First Light has performance apparel to support every hunter in every environment. Check it out at firstlight.com. F I R S T L I T E dot com. Hey, uh, Phil, can you turn the machine on? Machine is on. Okay, we'll start the show right here. Tell that again, Chester, real quick. Uh, the other day I went. I'm going to use this to. I'm going to use this to. Uh, I'm going to piggyback my story on your story. The other day I went into a gas station in North Dakota, and uh, I needed to buy some Zinfandel, which is Zin, <laughs> Chew. We call it Zinfandel. That's fine. Um, what else do you? Call but the it? the kid wouldn't let me buy it because my Montana ID did not scan. And I was like, I was jonesing for some because we were on the way back from Wisconsin and I had long car ride. Danielle, my wife's in there crying baby. It was just like, I really needed it. And she wasn't crying baby. No. There she, was a crying, crying baby. baby. A crying baby. She said, my wife, Danielle, in there crying baby. Uh, I might Like she's in there going, baby. I think I said, <laughs> I think I said, and the. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, I think that's a she, song. She, Maroon she, Five. I know. Yeah. Is yeah. it yeah. Maroon Five? Go on, Chester. Anyways, I got, got like, a hankering. I kind of got mad, and yeah. I never do that. That's I, what happens to addicts. I was like, <laughs> like this, this is a this is a well known thing with addicts. I was like, dude. I was like, here's three credit cards. Here's my work ID. It says photographer on it. You I know you don't care. <laughs> call the cops. No, I didn't go that far, but I I like convinced them to get me the the zins. It was either that or you're going to tear that place Dude, apart. I, I made it Flip through the, the drive. Don't make me go out and get my chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, made it through the drive. I'm going to piggyback Not my... proud of it. Can I piggyback my thing on now? Sure. Okay, so uh, I was in Duluth, Minnesota a long time ago. And I was driving from... I was driving across the country. I took a little side detour up into Duluth. And I'm in a bar in Duluth. And I get carded. I was a youngster back then. And uh, 26, 27 years old. And I have a Montana driver's license. And the guy at the bar says, I'm not kidding you. He says, hey, can you bring a grease trap to my buddy's pizza joint in Four really? Corners? And you didn't know the guy? No. What? Did you know the he guy goes, in Four Corners? I'll give you 40 bucks. What's that? Did you know the guy in Four Corners? No idea. Really? I hand my bar to my, my I hand my ID to a bartender. He goes, you live in, in Montana? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, he knew Montana well, and he's like, he knew where, however, we got to talk about where I was going, and he wants me to detour and drop a grease trap off at a bar in uh uh in Four Corners near here, like the Corner he, Club. Can't yeah. remember what the name of the place was. It's so long ago. Probably the Corner. Probably not even still be there. It's the kind of place. And he says, "I'll give you trap. forty. Yeah. I'll give you forty bucks. All you gotta do is bring it there and set it out back." Did you do it? Yeah. Well, he gives me a box. And it's just a big, heavy box, all sealed up. Mm. And I get down the road and I start getting paranoid. <laughs> yeah. big box open it up. Yeah. I start getting paranoid. I get down the road a ways and I get so paranoid that I pull over, Check cut that box there. open, open up. It is legitimately it is a greasy ass grease trap. Oh, huh. that's funny. Honest man. And I made my delivery, got paid ahead of time. Perfect. So, yeah. so that's called well, how, American elbow grease. Forty. Bucks? How does this relate to the tobacco thing? You said you got a story because he got ID'd, ID'd and car, getting oh, ID'd. Oh, right. Getting ID'd. Right. Right. It was yeah, a loose. It was a tenuous right. piggyback. Uh, okay. Got Join it. today by Sydney Wells from Outdoor Sports. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> bar stool, not outdoor. Bar stool outdoors. Yes. Um, which is part. I'm, I'm mixed. I combined bar outdoor, stool, outdoor and, bar stool sports. Yeah. Yeah. I meant to say. Barstool Sports, but it's Barstool Outdoors. Yeah. Correct? It's been a long day. Yeah. Yeah. And tell us why it's been a long day. Because we've been duck hunting all mm -hmm. morning. Under the tutelage it's been of good. our other guest, Brady Davis. <laughs> give us the setup. What were, uh, how would you say what we're... Give, give us how, what we were doing. So we'd been watching this field for a handful of days. You know, it was a, it's a cut spring wheat field. It's been loading up with ducks, loading up with geese, loading up with swans. 
Yeah. We actually had three swans decoy today in land. Yeah, you don't see that very that often. That was pretty cool. Yeah. That's cool. Like, that is circled. Not, that is not normal. Yeah, circled around, yeah. came they're, back. Nobody, they're pushing through right now. Nobody had a tag? No, and even if you did, you can't mm-hmm. hunt them here. Yeah, not gotcha. in this flyway, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, I think the only place you can hunt them is up at Freeze Out Lake. Gotcha. Yeah, up north. So, yeah, we had a good game plan, good setup. Uh, man, I thought we had a heck of a morning. I mean, good oh, time. It was great morning. You did good at playing cleanup, too. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it was a good morning. It yeah, was we really had fun good. and talked uh, some crap and how was shot some birds. And- he shoots a, a, he shoots a old ass 10 gauge. It's 870. It's a Browning BPS. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can't tell because it's painted like an American flag. Yep. Yeah. I know what you're <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, it's a, Cer- it's a it's Cerakoted. It's a 10-gauge pump with the, a 32-inch barrel. He calls it the Lord's gauge. With an American <laughs> flag. Yeah, it's the Lord's gauge. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you hunt with that thing all the time. I, I hunt with it as much as I can, yeah. What I'll tell you is it's a straight killer. Well, every time he hits, he's like, well, that's the 10 gauge. I'm like, well, you still have to aim it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's a little more going on. Like you could give that gun to a lot of people and nothing's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there, there sure. is, there's a bit of skill involved for sure. Uh, that's but, a 10 gauge for you. Yeah. Every I'm time. Like, what, what that is called is that's called leading proper. <laughs> yeah. We did have one goose that was, it was a heck of a poke with the 10 bore. Yeah. That one high goose. That was good. No, but was no, fun. I had a great time. It was fun hunting with you guys. We it got them. It was fun hunting out of the A-frame too. Because mm-hmm. when I was told that it was going to be a dry field, I thought it was going to be in layout blinds. So the A-frame was great to hear that we were hunting out of. It's little, so comfortable. Yeah. We had, a guy on, uh, we had a guy on the show. Chester, you were there. Chester's here and was there. Max Bard is here, was not there. Oh. Chili's here, was not there. Seth's here, was there. Mm. <laughs> Following? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got it. Losing a lot of listeners. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I'm going to tell, Chester, about they, layout blinds? Yes. We had I a guy do. on the podcast who was in a layout blind, and uh, someone said, like, get him. And he blew three of his toes. He blew the, what's interesting is he blew three of them out of the middle. Like, when you picture blowing your toes off, don't you picture blowing the edges? No. You don't? I picture you right in the middle of your foot, yeah. yeah. Oh, I always picture you'd shoot <laughs> off one of the sides. Mm. You'd shoot off your pinky toe. Like, I could picture shooting off my big toe. I can't picture plucking the three middle toes. <laughs> it's called a field goal. <laughs> <laughs> plucking the three middle toes out of the spread. I just picture blowing the whole damn thing yeah, off. Yeah, all of yeah. your toes. No. You have a picture of that somewhere way down on your... Way down. You were there? there was, no, no, I wasn't there when he did it, but I was there when he told the story. Oh, he told the story. Now, my old man was shot in the foot, um, rabbit hunting, and carried those pellets for a long, long time in his foot. No toes removed. And then he didn't want to tell any. They t- tried to keep it secret, so he acted like he, uh, act like he had had some kind of other injury, and they kept it secret from people that someone had blown him in the foot. Hmm. There was a guy uh, last year here in Montana, a young buck that blew his foot off and had to get life flighted out of the field. Lay up on the whole foot. Uh, pretty yeah, pretty much like the bottom half of his like or top half of his foot. See, that ceases to be funny. Yeah. What? That's not funny. That's not, not funny. funny. No. Well, I was telling a funny story. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Way to go, man. If but, you only use part of your foot, it's funny. But if you yeah, lose like, all no, damn I was, thing, I was going back well, to the, like shooting yourself the, in the, the foot. Like, it, was uh, he using a layout blind? No, he wasn't using a blind at all. Do you want to know the crazy thing about this guy? He the, still shot the geese. He still... The, the delay... Or ducks. So he's getting out of his layout blind. Boom. Max Boom. knows this guy. Oh, you do? Yeah. How the hell do you know that's, him? That's the first time we met mm-hmm. Max was on that. Oh. Because Max stopped in on that shoot. Huh. Max stopped in, filleted a bunch of walleyes, and then, then said dip, hi and dipped dip. out. Pack, packing a big old dip there, Chester. You can't even talk. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. I, no. He pulled one out. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, you know him? Yeah, Danny. Yeah. Yeah, I know Danny. Well, boom, there goes his toes, and he's still... Like the delay, the realization is so, de- he shoots it, he still shoots. But then when, here's where it falls apart. If you ask him if he hit, he doesn't know. So somewhere between, <laughs> somewhere, you following me? Yeah. Somewhere <laughs> between shooting his toes 
and registering whether or not he had a hit, it struck him what had happened. Yeah, he probably started shooting and realized something bad just happened. Well, I usually black out when I shoot into a flock of geese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I still got all my toes still. Yeah. This is precisely why we had that long safety speech this morning. <laughs> oh, I really yeah. appreciated that safety speech. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah, well, we do it every time. No, that's great. Yeah. That's like a really, a really uh, thorough, motivational uh, safety speech. Dude, I love that. Yeah, I love that too. There's so many people, like, there's so many times people don't do that. And then, like, stuff happens. Dude, you yeah. know what? You know? It was in my, it was, it was helpful because it, uh, the way you handle it and the story you tell, uh, it's effective because it made it st- it burned in my head yeah, yeah you re- rethink things no yeah. matter how many times you, you you know are out there hunting or holding a gun it just it's always a good to have that fresh reminder well, i was telling time. them we do it even when it's just us mm-hmm. like the same guys we hunt with day in and day out we we could have hunted 12 days in a row and at the start of the hunt before shooting light I'm going to stand in front of the A-frame blind and give a little bit of a soapbox speech about safety. Yeah, that constant reminder is good because some people get overconfident. Well, and, and sometimes the more you do it, right, when you're doing it every day, you just get complacent. You get complacent, yeah, right? You get, yeah, like a version of, you get like a version of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know? And so we go through it every day. Luckily, everybody that we hunt with that's kind of on our team takes it serious. But especially when we're with guests and new people, right? I'm like, hey, we're going to harp on you if we see anything that, shouldn't be happening yeah mm-hmm. Any but let's flags. just let's just do it right from the start and it's way more fun then we don't have to be paranoid and because exactly. we've all hunted with yeah. people that like 30 minutes in you're like we should have had a safety speech we well, know what else even, is effective about oh sorry go ahead <laughs> even just the reminder of the gun on the a-frame mm-hmm. like just talking about not getting it caught mm-hmm. safety all of that stuff that's just good a reminder yeah another thing you, that you said that actually changed my behaviors is if i'm sitting there and I'm like two hands on the two hands on the shotgun, and I know a bird's gonna commit. I'll put it on fire, right? And in your safety talk, you said your gun goes on fire when you're up, when it clears the blind and yep. it's pointing out. Yep. And so I kept being like, yeah, same thing. Can't do that because I'll get yelled at. Yeah. <laughs> I was the same way. And in that a moment, times right? I clicked it. And clicked. I was like, I clicked it. I'm like, oh shit! And I clicked it back. So well, I, don't that, get, I don't want to get in trouble. I did the same thing. I was like, oh shit! Did anybody hear that? <laughs> well, in that moment, right? It's like that final moment. Like everybody's dead quiet. Everybody's holding still. Your senses are heightened, and sure as hell, you'll sit there and you'll hear click. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> who just clicked off safety? Yeah, I you clicked know, mine, like, and I was like, should I click it back loud? Or right. <laughs> so he just act, click act back, like no like one soft, heard it. push it Is back. Is he counting clicks? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Three clicks and you're out of the field. Yeah. yeah with, well, with that, do you do you kick, like, have you ever had an instance like where you had to, like, stop a hunt because someone's not following the rules? We've had to reprimand before, for sure. What does that, like, look like for you guys? Like, Usually just you, when you see it happening, like, the second it happens... You know, and try not to be an ass about it, but like, right. hey, man, mm-hmm. like, Matter of fact. if we're going to keep hunting, I was serious about what we talked about, right? Like, mm-hmm. I'm not the fun police, but we do all want to get out of here alive and say, like, this is supposed to be the most fun thing ever. Yeah. So let's keep it that way. Um, but there has been times when we've had to stop and remind people and you just see things, right? Again, and and honestly, it's usually the people that waterfowl hunt a lot. Mm-hmm. It's not actually the newbies. Or the people that don't do it often. It's it's usually, this is my point, yeah. it's usually the guy who's hunting day in and day out and you just get complacent. I mean, I can do it. We can yeah, all do so it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, yeah, we yeah, were yeah, on yeah, a yeah. hunt. There's a guy that we know who's very, you know, accomplished and does it a lot. And, you know, Seth had to say twice, nothing personal against the guy, but just be like, barrel. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. oh my gosh, um, that's my biggest pet peeve. It was, yeah. you it was pointed yeah. at our heads multiple times. Yeah, yeah. I unload on my kids about it, and I can never, uh, I always try to weigh, uh, like how much to freak out on them where you don't want to turn them totally off, but you're trying to scare mm-hmm. the daylights out of them. It's mm-hmm. fine balance. So, if someone, if anyone's figured that out, send me an email. <laughs> <laughs> I, I personally know two people who got killed duck hunting. Seriously? Really? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Personally know two people. My f- my father's um cousin and then a uh, a kid that my brothers went to high school with and it's like mm. it's it is bad and both of them happened 
in a very similar way. They were in a boat and one guy was sitting down. They were, long story short, they were taking turns shooting. So not everyone was supposed to. You know, supposed to be shooting because in one instance, one kid had a hurt leg. So when it was his time to shoot, everyone would stay seating because he couldn't stand. So it was only him shooting. Mm. Well, he thought it was his turn. The other guy stood up. He shouldn't be swinging that way anyways, but swung his gun right into the face of this other kid. Yeah. Um, mm. Can we move on? <laughs> but but I yeah. just want to say Man, that Max got I just want to say that because it's a reality, and I'm personally sure. connected with two people, and I don't think this gets talked about actually enough. Yeah, is and gun safety, and it happens is, all the time. This is why we harp on it. Yeah, another another Brady Davis rules. Uh, he don't let dogs in the A frame too tight, too tight, and they just knock over crap too tight, oh. knock over guns. Yeah. You know, their tails are always wagging, you know, and I, it makes me so paranoid when I see people with a dog in an A-frame and they'll always tell you like, well, my dog's good. He don't right? go, for, he don't freak out. Oh, like, yeah. He doesn't. Yeah. Everyone he has not, a good dog. Everybody's got a good <laughs> my dog. My dog always watches where his tail right. is. <laughs> and I'm like, man, so we, we have a hard and fast rule, no dogs in the A-frame ever. And they're always in a dog hide by themselves. And I appreciate it. Like when guys like Max comes and hunts with us and brings his dog, which is a phenomenal dog. They're just totally cool with it. Like I tell them when you're coming, like bring a dog blind. Even if we have a big A-frame and there's only four of us hunting and there's tons of room. Well, it's like, not for just the hunter safety. It's for the dog safety too. Well, 100%. You know? yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. We do a, we do a series, um, uh, Meat Eaters Campfire Stories, which is these audio originals. And it's people telling, like, you know, so far the two we've done have been close calls. Mm-hmm. So like shit that almost happened real bad and one of the guy tells a story about getting shot by his dog mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it happens i mean you read about it so you know what's crazy yeah. about some full circle stuff on that we one time had a uh we had an emergency room doctor on uh adam was it alan, alan. or adam alan. i screw that up alan, every yeah. time alan lazara yep. came on and he's actually published about uh um tree stand incidents but so he's a emergency room doctor and a hunter, and he came on and just implored people to learn how to apply tourniquets and carry tourniquets. This dude, he's hunting with his dad. He gets shot by his own dog, and had heard that podcast, and did the what the guy was talking about. Mm. And it saved him. Yeah. And like credits having like listened to that doctor explain that on the episode. That's cool. That's With, bad to the bone. Because like awesome. how tight you put that thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you tight, tight. Uh, okay, Sydney, give me your impressions of the hunt. Then we're going to pull that tongue out. My impressions of the hunt? The duck's like, tongue. Well, we should go ahead and start doing that. But I think that it was a great hunt. I went to Canada and I shot zero birds. How'd that go down? In Canada? Yeah. yeah. That's hard to do. How'd that? Yeah, I, I want to know <laughs> the same thing. How'd that go? When was this? How many days did you hunt? Uh, three. G give okay, me some more. Okay, I lied. Okay, we saw zero ducks the first day. We shot some specks, which was actually pretty cool because oh. in Illinois they're super smart. But they were tornadoing down. We shot, I think, like thirty birds, snow geese, and specks. So the first day wasn't oh, that bad, but okay, that was so you're by, by ducks yeah. you're being but, very specific. But that was in between ducks. like twelve people, um, and then we didn't shoot anything the rest of the trip. Um, we hunted so you had two more hunt days. Yeah, we shot the evening because I think we were trying to shoot ducks that in the evening, didn't get anything. In the next two days, we didn't shoot anything, which I get it. Like that's hunting. It's not always going to go that way. But we did kill a mule deer, so I wasn't that upset. But uh, yeah, the weather did get really warm and the wind, I don't know. I don't know. We just didn't kill them. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to hate on anybody or anything because it is how it goes typically, mm -hmm. but but you're a little bit hating on them. I'm just a little salty. It just sucks. My first time up in Canada. You're not hating on them. You're hating on that the, the, you didn't get ducks. Was yes, it, was exactly. it pre that big cold front that just came through, or no? So or it after? was okay. So it was mid October. We left. Um, I hunted. I think like the fifteenth around there. Um, so they had a cold front come through, and they were shooting hundreds of ducks. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. But I was mule deer hunting, so I was focusing over there. I came back. Weather warmed up. 
cold fronts gone yeah. and there was like no ducks flying. We like I said the first day we shot some specs mm. and some snow geese, so it was a horrible, but mm. it wasn't like a lights out Canada trip, which everybody goes to Canada yeah. to do. Like I've mm. never been up there. You, you were a victim so. of the old you should have been here yesterday. Yeah, big time. I actually was, <laughs> <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> yes. And it sucked yeah. bad. It hurt. But it is what it is. I'm just gonna have to go back up there. Yeah. When things go real good, I'll tell people you were here yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how good today was. Yeah. This is like one of those days that if it was tomorrow, we'd be talking about it. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. but you were here. Yeah. Yesterday. Today was. A... You were here yesterday, today. Yeah. <laughs> <You're confusing laughs> <now. laughs> today was a good day, though. So that's yeah, why. Like, I'm just tomorrow, like... if it sucked, you would refer back to today. Mm-hmm. Yes. And say, oh, you should have been here yesterday. Absolutely. It was great. Yeah. Absolutely. We recently had a guest on. Uh, Corinne, do you mind teeing this up? Okay. From duck, like, but it, it just come, come tee it up, Corinne. Okay. Here you go. Teeing it up. Uh, we recently had Phil Lavretsky on from the University of Texas at El Paso, and he his lab is teamed up with Ducks Unlimited uh, for a project called uh, Ducks Duck DNA. You can visit that at duckdna.com. And you can um, listen to the whole damn And you can also listen to our entire episode. podcast or watch it on YouTube. Um, well, what did what we, we call, call it? What did we call that one? Our Wild Duck's Really Wild. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So our Super Wild Duck's Really Wild, he came in to talk about yeah. the way that you have game farm mallards mm-hmm. and the way game farm mallards are um, breeding their weakness and habits into wild mallards right. in the United States. Exactly. And uh, one way to help contribute data to their uh, growing research um, is by participating yourself as a citizen scientist. So um, we've got a bunch of uh, test tube vials uh, with an agent in them and a reagent. I actually don't know the right word. I'm probably screwing that up. Yeah, sauce. Um, And the instruction is to cut uh, the the mallard tongue out or part of it out, um, and we've got kind of this little box of of uh, tubes for meat eater colleague harvested ducks. So uh, Seth is gonna with his lab coat on uh, do a little demonstration. Yep. Um, as we uh, increase the reach of meat eater laboratories as well. You know. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Schneider. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Good job, uh-huh. unbelievable was, job, unbelievable job. Very well. All right, science time. And, yep. Cor- and Corinne, Corinne Morris now. Yeah. Seth has Corinne, Corinne's don't, lab. Don't be fooled. If, I'm if, not you're not, if you're not watching on video, Seth has uh, Corinne's lab coat on, so don't think he's got his own sweet lab coat that says Corinne. Yeah. You had to borrow it. <laughs> not, not that cool yet. Okay, you ready? Yeah, let's do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what's happening. Seth is holding the – Seth is prying the duck's mouth open, and he's revealing its tongue, which is a Chinese delicacy. Yep. Save your tongues if you have time. Have you cooked them up yet, Kren? Nope. Yeah, Seth, I would say quarter quarter of an inch right there. So just a quarter an inch quarter of an inch from off the, the tip. From the top. Get this joke. It's on the tip of his tongue. <laughs> <laughs> it's like right there at the little indent. Yeah. You get it? <laughs> they they kind of naturally have a spot that uh shows you where to cut. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's like God wanted you to send the tip of his tongue in. Right there. There he goes. Yep. Oh, that noise was it. Oh. Okay. Sharp, sharp knife. Getting Seth vial, has vial cut number the, one. Seth has cut the tip of its tongue what off. What number is it? Probably one, marring one. One. Phil's yeah. special studio table. Oh, yeah. Brady, did he cut into the table? I don't think he cut into the table, but... I use the table as a cutting you know, board. It's a cutting... <laughs> That's it fine. makes a fine cutting board. <laughs> no. yeah. it was... Marring Phil's special table. Can I uh, touch this with my hands, or is that going to mess anything up, Grin? I think you're fine with okay, your hands. Good. I don't know. They like, might have sex. Duck had DNA. sex with Seth. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! All right, and there it is. Specimen number one. There's number one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now you, you have to fi- write yeah, down yeah, on yeah. your fill out your sheet. I don't have anything to write. Okay. With. We can do that later. I yeah. Guess. So yeah, we just pre- that's all it takes. We just participated in citizen science. And at the career. So now this will get submitted with. A lat lawn, um, court. This will get submitted with coordinates. What other kind of what other kind of biometric detail they want off that? Do they 
They don't need to ask a lot; they can just figure it out themselves, right? They want yeah, to know male, female. Yeah, they want species, sex, location, latitude, long, longitude, date, comments. Got it. So I'll send probably, you an onyx. Probably thing. ought to put this in the fridge, right? So and then they will be able to take that spoil. mallard. And so far, what that should, based on the conversation we had with them, that should come back wild mallard, purebred. That's what, that's your remembrance. Yeah, that okay. that duck should come back purebred. But they're watching the very slow westward creep of Penray's mallard. So, so mallards from Penray's mallards originating from Europe brought in as game farm birds breeding into wild mallards and perhaps creating some troubled behaviors. Mm -hmm. um, not following migratory patterns well, poor nesting su uh, success, poor site selection, um, lower ability to navigate foul weather. Uh, not that foul. <laughs> Oh, can I give you a little feedback, Brady? <laughs> I would love some Naming feedback. your dog Lead <laughs> creates a lot of confusion. Oh, this, that was this is a good story. Point. Good but story. Because yeah. he's like, Lead? No, like, oh, what now? Who's shooting Lead? What happened with Lead? Like, is it, what happened? Like, if there's multiple times, I'm like, oh, he's talking about his dog. Yeah. He was doing the safety <laughs> protocol, and he said Lead, and I'm like, well, you should probably keep your, your, your tone down here yeah. if you're shooting Lead. I'm no. going to name my next dog. Take him. <laughs> yeah. Brady, what's the punchline? Well, we named him Lead because it's the only lead we can legally use in the field. Yeah. Yep, there it is. And I love single syllable names for a dog. So mm -hmm. Lead, we can use Lead because he's good in the field. So yeah, yeah, he did great today. It was a good day. He saved great. us a lot of walking. That he, lead works. Great dog. No, he does. Yeah. And he like um he has he brings a lot of gusto. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like he he I, I would say he assaults the geese. Black not 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 in a bad way. It doesn't like maul. Yeah, but but if it's if it's running away, he, he, will, he will stop. He's him. on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's like he goes after yeah. like a football player. He had one today. I mean, it was like thousand yards. Really, that was a sailor, and then he ran way out to it. Right when he got to it, that joker got up and flew like another three hundred yards and went back down. He freaking all the way there, came back. He was he was catching his breath on he's that one. Good. I love yeah. that. Yeah, it was awesome. Love that. Uh, listener, listener, question here. Uh, the topic is fuzzy waterfowl regulations. This is something we discussed a great bit, but we'll discuss it right now again. This this feller says there's a gray area. This is the this is the listener email. There's a gray area in waterfowl hunting regulations. I I, I have to edit. This is a, this is verbatim, Corinne. I had to edit a little bit. Okay. Apologies to the listener. There's a gray area in waterfowl hunting regulations, um, which is a rule, I'm trying to edit it on the fly, which is a rule that's broken in 99% of grip and grin waterfowl picks. There's also a discrepancy in party shooting. Uh, okay, this is like answering a question, but you don't know what the question, not his fault. What he's talking about is this, I believe, Kryn, is this correct? He's talking about how you're supposed to have your own ducks separate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So when you're hunting ducks, um, you're supposed to keep track of who know who, who got what. Mm -hmm. Because you're not supposed to party hunt. Meaning if three guys are in a blind and you're each allowed five ducks, let's say, and one guy's got the hot gun, theoretically that guy is not supposed to shoot 15 ducks. And then uh, he's like, hey, I got everybody's limit. Time to go home. Like every hunter's supposed to get their own stuff. This guy brings up, well, okay, but when you take a duck grip and grin, you lay your ducks out, the ducks aren't separate. And when you're shooting and a duck comes in and three people stand up and bap, bap, who's duck. So he says, that's the gray area. And I think you're correct. I think that's why you don't see, um, I think there's there's like laws that are on the book, but in all of the, the time that I've been alive, I've never met someone who had a warden come in and had it be that he wants to understand out of three shooters who shot the duck. People that get in trouble for this are, it, it's like you get in trouble for this later on your way home. There's confusion. I never have heard of or seen of anyone jump out and be like, all right, boys, I got you. <laughs> 
Because I feel like more than one of you hit that duck, but now what are you going to do? I I think it's like, what we'd normally do in a situation is we'd look and be like, um, felt like Jimmy's duck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure seemed like he was aiming right. Someone's just got to claim that duck. (laughs) Hey, claim the duck. Yeah. Um, And that goes against, or goes towards their limit. Yeah. And so this isn't negating, uh, it's not negating the listeners thing, but it is fuzzy. And I think the, a way you cope with the fuzziness is you kind of look at over the course of time, where do you see people get infractions? They get infractions about shipping ducks, transporting ducks after the hunt. I've just never heard of somebody um, getting in trouble over like a, like a, like a dispute like that, mm-hmm. meaning a bunch of people shoot and someone claims the duck. I mean, of course. I mean, what do you, what do you, there's yeah. no possible way to do yeah. it. And I've never heard that it's illegal for two people. It's not like illegal for two people to shoot at one duck. Mm. No. No, I agree. I think somebody's got to claim it to Max's point. The other thing we do is if we have a lot of people in the blind and we're like really getting them, we will lay the birds out behind the blind in separate piles. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, Brady, Steve, Sydney, mm-hmm. you know, Dane, whatever. Yeah, two and we lay here, them out. Three there, I, one there. I think the the biggest thing is as soon as we're done in the field and we're about to go, and and this boggles my mind that people don't do this, but we tag them. Yeah, and you guys we, do what you, which we, you, yeah, you this morning did like what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I mean, it's a federal law that you have to tag birds for transport. And so we tag them and it's got the hunter's name, you know, the county that it was killed, the species, the number, the signature, everything on that tag. Um, that one is a fascinating rule because so many times people have been waterfowl hunting with us and I'm sure Max has experienced this and you're like, all right, we're going to tag birds. And people look at you like you're speaking Japanese, man. They're oh, like, what sure. are you talking about? Yeah. Like, we got to tag them. I tag them if, um, if I clean them and leave like a wing attack and I'm mm-hmm. flying somewhere and mm-hmm. I'm flying them home, I would tag them. But mm-hmm. I would never, I, I never in my life tagged a bird to drive 10, 20 miles down the road. Yeah. Right. As long as they're with you, you're fine. Okay. Um, but yeah, to Brady's point, for like any kind of transportation, if like you leave your birds with someone else, they got to be tagged for sure. So the way the rule is written is, I think it's actually like if you're going from the field to your abode, then you're you're good. But like today, Made a pit stop. we went from the field to lunch to the office here for the podcast and then home and you start doing, then they need to be tagged. Yeah. And um, then now you're in a building that's not your home and there's birds in your truck that are not completely, tagged. Completely, yep. Yeah. And yep. You're, not, you're not with them. Right. Because they're out in the parking lot. Right. So, and it takes two seconds to tag the birds. Like, it's just a simple rule to keep, and you just make sure you're always above board all the time. You and know, another awesome. another rule um, that you always hear about being a rule, and you don't hear of anybody get in trouble with the rule, is, uh, you know, you're not supposed to have, like, eagle feathers, hawk feathers. Mm-hmm. Unless you're, like, a Native American yeah. or something. We had like. a warden on, and he said he's written two citations for that. And he said one time... He is at a red light and there's a guy next to him that his, his rear view mirror is draped in raptor talons. Oh my Whoa. goodness. Pulls him over. Another time he's, it is, is leaving his grocery store, pushing a shopping cart and looks in the back of the truck and there's a dead owl in the back of him. Oh, oh, my, oh God. my God. So he waits to talk to the guy and he said, what's funny is both people their immediate thing was to tell me they're Native American. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> neither, neither was. <laughs> they look very Scandinavian. <laughs> Blue because eyes. that was like that's like the little thing everybody has in their head is I think it's okay if like you're Native American, <laughs> <laughs> right? So they're like, I'm Native American. Yeah. Uh here's not an interesting thing. Now, Sydney, you feel free to weigh in on any of the stuff you want. Okay. Is, is there anything you'd like to add right now? No, I've actually didn't know about the feathers though. Like can, is, is, that your, mean, is your rear view mirror draped? You're going to want to get rid of your feathers. When <laughs> no, you get I don't have any feathers. <laughs> what I'm saying is like, does that mean I'm, I'm I didn't it know It means that you're not allowed to have. That's what I'm saying. If I find it on in, a, in the cornfield and I see a feather. Yes. You, you, yeah. Like if you took that feather and like, if you took that feather and put it in your backpack, again, it's one of those rules that it's a rule, but you just don't meet. There's many more people that have picked up a, Eagle feather than there are that got in trouble for picking up eagle feathers. It was just one of those interesting rules that you sort of have the feeling in the back of your head that there's something about how you're not supposed to do it. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, I'm not picking up feathers, so nobody come for me. 
Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, but we, this guy's <laughs> point was he presented he was presented with two things that he couldn't ignore. Well, yeah, that, and, those and those, are, yeah. in those situations he would he stepped in because the one was just like like this like sort of you know chandelier of raptor talons <laughs> caught his eye and the other one was like the actual dead owl mm. yeah, that's but a or not it's the thing it's just like you know I don't know maybe they dyed the damn feather and it looks like an eagle feather I don't know yeah like if Oscar was out in the field and he picks up an eagle feather you know they're not probably, gonna lock him they're up probably not they're gonna not gonna, gonna cough him and stuff him <laughs> I don't think so <laughs> we were on a hunt last year and we shot a goose and it sailed like the next field over and the boys kind of all marked it like, I think he went that direction. And so I got out of the blind and I like went on a hike with lead. I'm like, we're going to go find this. Okay. This goose. He, again, his dog. My dog lead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's an effective method. I'm going to um, go get that goose of lead better not. Yeah. Yeah. That hasn't been illegal since 1986. Right. But we hiked our butts over there and I'm like, all right, he's in this direction. So with dogs, you can send them on a blind retrieve, right? Like, like they didn't see it go down. You a just send dog. them. Yeah. You send them out and they'll work the area. And so, I send him out and he's kind of working and I'm giving him some some commands and all of a sudden he gets real birdie. I'm like, yeah, oh, got it. I mean, it's happened a thousand times. Grabs a bird, comes back, and I'm like, that's not a goose. That's not a goose. <laughs> and brings back a, a dead hawk. Mm. And I was, was like, violation. oh crap. I'm like, what do I do? So I like, he, With brought, lead, it, no doubt. he brought it to heel, sat, handed it to me like he's supposed to. <laughs> and I like took it and instantly walked right back to where he had picked it up from and it's straight underneath the power line. So oh. all I can assume is that like this hawk got <laughs> yeah, zapped yeah, yeah. on the power yeah. line and I literally like left it there and turned and we were like walking out and I'm like, crap, that's not good. And it's right by a road. So I'm like, geez, like I'm glad, like I didn't want to look like my dog's retrieving hawks. Mm -hmm. And right then this goose like pokes its head up over the grass and I'm like, that one go and gets out. <laughs> we went back to the blind. Uh, upstairs in my office, I have a photo of my dad's, like I have a photo I pilfered from my dead father's old photos and he has an old photo where it's him and some other guys and they got cottontail rabbits hanging from strings and then on the end of the on the end of one of the strings they got their owl <laughs> which was like which was just like how it was matter of course yeah yeah it'd be like if you were a small game hunter get the hawks and owls and conservation you know? yeah it was yeah yeah it was hunting <laughs> <Yeah>. conservation <laughs> oh my God. Uh, here's a good one. So Pat, a uh, friend of the show, multiple time, been on, been on the show many times, uh, does some articles for uh, TheMeatEater.com. He, he wrote in and he sent in a piece that he was recently working on, uh, Pat Durkin being from Wisconsin. And he Pat covers wildlife politics. Uh, Pat has one of my favorite quotes, which is, big bucks make people stupid. Um, sent us an article he's working on about Speaking of citizen science, Seth over here, our resident citizen scientist today, he'll, he'll perk right up when he hears this, yep. about a citizen science program in Wisconsin where they monitor people's trail cams. Ooh. So there are about 2,000 citizen scientists enrolled in Snapshot Wisconsin. And they give you some guidelines and all that. And then so these 2,000 trail cams are out there. And they're watching, like, what are they getting? What are they getting on the trail cams? Um, you want to talk about a state with a lot of trail cams? I am. Wisconsin. That's what I am talking about. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot there. Yeah, dude, everywhere. Yeah. They have, they have, so there's no regulations on yeah, trail you got, cams. You got to be careful where you pee. My, um, did you see the picture I recently got with my beaver cam? Did I send it to you? Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's like you think that I'd be getting like an award from National Geographic. What was I, it? I got a beaver cam set up where it's on a little crossover between a pond and a creek. And I just like to watch the beavers go by. So when I wake up in the morning, let's look on there and see what all, and everything in its brother comes through here. Like everything. It's not, I don't want to say where it is. It'd be illegal to hunt. Mm -hmm. It's in an urban environment. City limits. Yeah. Urban environment. But it's just like this little kind of like hot spot. And I keep a camera there and I've gotten everything in its brother on this camera. Um, mallards walking by, mink, weasels, magpies, one of them poor wills. What's the kind of whippoorwill is around here? Whippoorwill looking bird? Keep wanting yeah. to send it to the Cornell people. Fal Don't they call them like false wills or something? Yeah. Uh, something like that. Mice, rats. Otters, rats, pack rats, mice, otters, scrats. Mountain lion. Deer, a pet dog, house cat, what about a mountain lion? Dude fishing. 
No mountain lions. No mountain lions. Give me time. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> I get on it the other day. A otter standing there with a really nice trout holding it by the head. Wow. And you can tell the trout's still alive. He's all like curled up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then that otter sat there, like perfectly sat there and devoured that fish in front of the camera. That's cool. Oh, that was great. So in Wisconsin, they have this uh, snapshot Wisconsin. And what Durkin was writing about was he was writing about this. I don't know, is Durkin like a, I don't know if Durkin, uh, I feel like Durkin, rather than being a wolf hater or a wolf lover, which comprises 90% of Americans, Dirt falls in that sweet spot of like sort of wolf rational. Mm-hmm. Dirt's, or Durkin is wolf rational. But he hears people saying in Wisconsin, like, you can't get a picture of a deer anymore. You're like, I get more pictures of wolves than I get of deer. And so he looked at this year when they came out with the new snapshot Wisconsin statistics. And so for snapshot Wisconsin right now, they're running 426 deer photos to every wolf photo. But there's some interesting stuff in here. So Sawyer County, Wisconsin. Um, Sawyer County, Wisconsin, 57 cameras. Where's Pick- that? Is that up north? It's got to be. Someone want to look? Chet? Just, yeah. So Sawyer I'll County. It up exactly, but it's. Okay, not one northern county. So assuming not the southern ones, they don't have wolves. Not one northern county had wolves on every camera. That's up by Hayward. Good musky country up there. St. Croix County. 2% of the cameras. So in St. Croix County, there's 47 cameras in St. Croix County. 47 enrolled cameras in St. Croix County. 2% of the enrolled cameras picked up pictures of wolves. Dunn County, 30 cameras, two picked up pictures of wolves. Then you get to this, Douglas County, 61% of cameras set out will grab a picture of a wolf. Wow. Iron and Price Counties, 63% of cameras set out capture a wolf. Uh, Marinette County is the top for deer photo prevalence, but there's some interesting stuff with bear prevalence. Um, bear photos far outnumbered wolf photos in every county except Shawano. Shawano. What is it? Shawano. No, it's not. Shawano. I'm looking at it right here. Shawano. <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> Shawano? Shawano. They're just like, they're just shortcutting it. Yeah, I guess that's probably just how we say it. We had a cabin over by Mountain, which was not too far from there. We did see wolves. Shawano. We saw deer, too. 30 cameras. Check this one out. This is interesting. So in that county, 30 cameras snapped 529 bear photos and 522 wolf photos. Wow. Hmm. St. Croix County, 47 cameras, one wolf photo. Now, I'm not reading all of Durkin's article, but Dirk, I guess the main point of Durkin's article is that there aren't as many wolf photos as you'd think. But I look, and I'm like, that seems like a lot. Of, seems like, like a, a lot. lot of wolf photos. Especially yeah. on that point near Duluth, right by the border of Canada. That's a that's a lot. That's not very good for your deer population. Okay, ready? Now, again, things could get things could here's the final synopsis for all the counties in Wisconsin. And for sure. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, this is only northern. This is the stats for only northern Wisconsin. And this is the final totals. And keep in mind, the same things can get mul- photographed many times. I had a camera one time that photographed, you know, uh, that photographed the same doe and fawn. I don't know, five hundred times, right? So bear that in mind. Um, total cameras: one thousand one hundred nineteen enrolled cameras in northern Wisconsin in snapshot Wisconsin. Deer photos. 2,899,600 I don't have my spectacles on. 48. 48. So we'll round up. We're going to round these by the fives. We're going to round that up to 1,000 cameras, rounding down from 1119 to 1,000. Rounding up. These are big roundings. Rounding up to 2,900,000. 36,324 bears. 
So those 1,119 cameras captured 36,324 bear images. Those 1,119 cameras captured a total of 6,803 wolf photos, bringing the final number crunch to um, one wolf photographed for every 426 deer. Now, if I was a statistician, I'd probably shoot all kinds of holes in how that's being looked at, but that's how that's being looked at. I mean, wolves are so much more nomadic, too. Just Which they could, means they could show up on potentially more, more cameras more, or probably perhaps less because they're not camped out in some little spot. I think perhaps less because they're not camped out. Yep. I mean, think of how many times you have a deer camera out in Wisconsin and you get you get the same deer coming through every night. You know? Yeah, same food food pod. Mm-hmm. Same. One of my favorite wolf stats: um, when beavers are dispersing in May and June in the Northern Great Lakes, I can't remember what it is. Ninety-eight percent of wolf scats contain beaver remains, and then um, by the end, like by the late summer, when they're not dispersing anymore, it just drops off precipitously to, ne- to next to nothing. Yeah, I read that. But in they his hammer. Article. Yeah, they hammer beavers when the beavers are dispersing, and then they just forget about them, go on to something else. So is the point of the article saying that the wolf problem isn't really a problem in Wisconsin? Uh, let me tell you about, it. I want to say a couple things about Durkin. Okay. <laughs> I recently got a note from Durkin. I told a story recently about losing a friend of mine. And I got a note from Durkin about touching in with me about the story I told about losing a friend of mine. I showed the note to my wife, to which my wife said, That is one of the good ones, meaning Durkin. Mm -hmm. If everybody on this planet behaved like Pat Durkin, there wouldn't be any problems. I think what Pat's trying to say here is, I think Pat's trying to say that there aren't that many wolves, maybe? Is that your... He's like, you people (laughs) saying that all you get is wolf photos, let's look at the stats. I think what he's saying is it's not as bad as everybody thinks it is. Because you go up to those counties and you talk to those people and immediately they're like, wolves, you know. Yeah, everyone jumps to blame it on wolves. Maybe the bears are killing fawns in the spring. I think a lot of it has to do with logging up there in the Nicolay National Forest and not having... There's there's more and more old growth and not as much like new brows and things mm-hmm. like that for deer. That at least in the area where we were at. I mean there wolves there are wolves and there are more wolves and you think you th- I mean when they opened the season, you know, in Wisconsin to shoot wolves, it was staggering how quickly they got to quota. <laughs> Which always makes me think there must be a lot of wolves. But let me let me give it to Dur- I'll give it now that we got into it. And we're questioning Durkin's, uh, you know, journalistic integrity. Here's the headline. Northwoods deer outnumber bears wolves in trail cam survey. That's the headline. Durkin goes on to say, folks who scorn gray wolves often claim they see more of them than white-tailed deer when poking around Wisconsin's Northwoods the past 20 years. Meanwhile, Trail cams are now as common as ravens and wood ticks in those forests, providing round-the-clock surveillance of bait piles, food plots, and two-track trails. All that photographic evidence spawns countless claims and surplus exclamation points. And he quotes someone, quote, We seldom see deer on our trail cams anymore, but we see plenty of wolves. Last fall before gun season, I didn't find five sets of deer tracks in the snow, but I found lots of wolf tracks. Wolf tracks in some spots on our logging road look like cow paths. That's why there's no deer left in northern Wisconsin. And this individual that Pat's quoting has already used four exclamation points and adds six on the end of that passage. He means it. All of which were quoted by Pat. Then he goes on to say, this is Durkin. As best I could tell, hold on a minute, no. Durkin goes on to say, hey, every hunter throughout history wants more deer and deer sign. That includes me. While scouting my favorite sites in Ashland County two weeks ago, I found no deer tracks or buck sign in three days. And this is the former editor of Deer and Deer Hunting Magazine. Pat's a deer. Wow, he's got 30-some shoulder mounts of white-tailed deer. 
which is excessive. Something like that. It's excessive. Something to shoot for. Oh, no. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Pat likes deer so much that you know when you put stickers on your truck? Pat's put stickers of famous deer on his truck. Oh, he loves... Really likes deer. Does he, like, go to, like, those auctions where they sell, like, the antlers? Probably. Yeah. He loves deer in the Edmunds Fitzgerald. Knows a lot about the yeah. Edmund Fitz. Knows a lot about the Navy. Okay. <laughs> knows he was in the Navy. Knows a lot about that. I've never had that happen, the, the, the shittiness of the sign, he's saying. I've never had that happen in 20 years of hunting that part of the... Nicolay National Forest. Well, give me the first part, Chester. Uh, the... Chiquam... Chiquamagon, 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 Nicolay National Forest. Isn't Nicolay the feller that showed up in Green Bay, like Cross Lake, Michigan, and showed up in Green Bay and put on a Mandarin robe like he thought he was in China? <laughs> I have no, this idea. no, listen, no idea. Like this dude for real. <laughs> that real? This dude for real. I think Nicolay, when he crossed Lake Michigan, he's like, ha! And he like had been carrying like a a, a, chi- a a China made robe of some sort and put it on to go and like meet the people. <laughs> He's wow. like, wow, the musky fishing's good in China. <laughs> <laughs> and looks, the beer and cheese curds are great. <laughs> suspiciously like the other side of the lake. <laughs> um Nicolay Nash Forest, Durkin goes on. Then again, I saw no wolf sign either, which makes sense. Why would wolves waste their time and energy hunting such lousy deer habitat, especially after a scientifically documented, quote, very severe killer winter for whitetails? Then there's a passage I'm not going to read. Then I'm going to try to end this whole thing we're doing here by getting to this, to continue my quote of Pat Durkin. But one man, and here's, this is the important part. But one man's observations, I'm pounding the table, but one man's (laughs) observations don't necessarily paint a picture. To learn what my my fellow hunters and other folks are documenting in Ashland County, I looked up the Snapshot Wisconsin data dashboard. Snapshot Wisconsin's current five-year data set. uh, uh. The, d- the numbers, however, make you question some folks' claims about wolves overrunning the North Woods. And then in Ashland County, for instance, 30 trail cams in, in scientifically chosen sites took 23,299 deer photos from 2018 to 2022. Those same cameras took 107 wolf photos and 713 bear photos. Now, this deal about wolves and bears is something that really... Uh, Keep in mind because when they did mortalities, like the, after wolves came into Idaho and wolves like decimated elk populations in the Idaho panhandle. But you know what had always been really hard on them is mountain lions. So more elk calves are killed by mountain lions in the Idaho panhandle, but that's always been that way. So it, whatever the hell it was, it was like, like for every hundred calves that hit the ground, 23, I don't know what the number is, 20, 23, something like that, 23. 20 are going to get killed by mountain lions. But it's just always been that way. You have very stable mountain lion populations over time. Everybody's used to it. Wolves come in, and they don't trump that number, but they add to that number. And, and that, so it's like, what when a wolf cat, when an elk calf hits the ground, what's probably going to kill it? A mountain lion. But wolves are the new players in town. And there's there, mountain lions have always been killing whatever the number was, 13, 20, I can't remember. They've always been killing that, but now you're adding on eight. And that's the tipping point mm. from normalcy. So people on the ground are like, man, there was a bunch of elk and then wolves came and now the elk are really down. Um, if you could somehow remove, it's almost like if you could remove mountain lions and almost do more for elk, but the wolves just tipped it so wildly out of balance that whatever equilibrium was there gets shot. And then what's the regulation in Idaho for wolves? Is they're there- not, they're delisted. So we, like, we, like I did something. Um, (laughs) Wolves were successfully delisted in the Northern Rockies. Um, So they were successfully delisted in Idaho, Wyoming, and Montana. And it's been very whipsaw in the Northern Great Lakes. Seesaw, what's the term? Whipsaw? I don't know. 
back and forth. Back and forth. Yeah, yeah seesaw. Like a saw. Se- seesaw. So like, yeah, you can like in Montana. Right here, now they're listed. You can you can go and buy a wolf tag. Like right you could be Montana. walking around with one in your Same pocket night. right now. In fact, I am. Great, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve. You were right about the uh, Nick Leck guy showing up in Green Bay with, wearing a Chinese dress. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that, Corinne? Mm-hmm. More power to him. <laughs> 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 that nice. That's totally out of focus, Max. <laughs> oh, out of focus. I tried. Thanks. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Speaking of Kryn, here's the thing. Kryn's been hot on. Um, Kryn's hot on, like urban urban rat hunting is the new flathead noodling. <laughs> do you agree, Sydney? <laughs> When flathead noodle, sh- do you remember go like to Chicago. the do you remember the do you remember the way flathead noodling just captured the collective imagination of American media? Yeah, hundred percent. It was like there's always been some guys that noodle flatheads. Burkard Bilger wrote the book Noodling for Flatheads, which is about southern cult the way southern culture still exists in the U.S. and the exploration of southern culture, and it became that every TV host. Anyone on the planet over the next decade went and noodled a flathead. Ryan Callahan. Anyone. Have you noodled a flathead? Yep. Okay. I didn't, but I also did never got a tattoo. I'm not going to lie. It was so much fun. <laughs> it was so fun. No, no, I'm not a down on it. I'm not down on it. I'm just observing that it became no. a media fascination. It was. It was a trend. It was a trend. And right now, it is a major trend, and Corinne is hot on it, to go rat killing with dogs in cities. And while noodling was supposed to be like a city man's introduction into rural culture, this is a rural introduction into urban culture. Like, you'd come from the sticks to go see how these city boy rat killer dogs... Like Jack Terriers, probably, like right? I so feel Corinne like is, Corinne is, Corinne's really itching to have one of these rat hunters on the show. Bad. Interesting. Uh, they're up in northern Montana on the border of Canada because, Jack, you might. Uh, we were talking about to our friend Ty in Calgary. There's no rat population in Alberta, I think, because they just completely wiped them out. They got them? Yep. With dogs? Maybe. My understanding. I don't know, but that's like, and they're right, and it's on the border. Hmm. This hasn't come up in meat eater trivia. But my understanding is Anchorage, Alaska is the large, is some, has some superlative, it's the largest, the world's largest port city with no rats. And when a rat shows up, they have a shit fit. <laughs> they do. When a rat, if someone, if a boat comes in with a rat, it's like code red. Hmm. Burn so, the boat. So, Corinne, what are you going to do? Are you going to get one of these people on or not? No. I just want to clarify. I'm not quite sure I want to have one of these city folks You're on. Definitely I just curious. find it no, I just find it hilarious that major mainstream uh news organizations and newspapers seem to have a fascination with hunting through the lens of uh you know, city residents hunting rats with their like it's caught on. dachshunds, right? Yeah, it's the new, so it's the new, it's new like England. they're all it's like you can you can just Google it and their articles and like uh, New York Magazine, Washington Post, the New York Times. They yeah, believe just... me, because Corinne sends them all to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I have the one. Washington Post did a podcast about these rat. Like it's just, I don't know. Yeah, I me, might... me and Corinne text a lot, and I have to sort through all her rat killing, <laughs> all her rat killing texts text. to I find might... the ones that interest me. I might need your help to like look up the facts. But when we were in New Zealand, we were watching the television. It was the news, okay? television tv watching tv news is on they were having a cat killing contest like house cat feral Mm -hmm. feral cats yes and they got the school kids rolled into it yep and it was a tournament and they had they had to literally cancel the tournament because some people's house cats were actually getting killed with collars on didn't we cover this? We covered this. Yeah, yeah. We covered it. You covered it? Yeah. yeah. Well, we covered, we didn't cover that aspect of it. We covered the aspect of it that everyone was fine with it until they got the kids involved. And then it, then people got like. They were fine with it until they're like, where's uh, Mr. Peppers? He was here <laughs> today and he got out and he got killed. Well, yeah. I, you know what I'd say? I'd say, um, was Mr. Peppers maybe not in the house? 
But Mr. Pepper's got out of the house, man. It, it says, yeah, that's on him then. It says that's yeah. on Mr. Pepper. Yeah. It says the kid who killed the most cats between mid-April and the end of June won a total of one hundred and fifty-five dollars. <laughs> What a time to be alive. That's some good old fashioned you know? fun right there. That was just last spring. Well, it's too. The good old days right now. Yeah. Just yeah. This last spring. In New Zealand. Yeah. Yesterday yeah. is today. Oh man, if we had a gap going <laughs> <laughs> up. Yesterday. That kid was here yesterday. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's nuts. All right, Sydney. Earlier you were, we were talking about um I was talking about we we're talking about hunting as kids. Did you talk about growing up and like falling asleep? Oh yeah, well, under like, a blanket in the bring blind. a blanket to the blind. So you got you got into it young. Yeah, it was more like a like how you told your kids, "I don't care what you're doing, cancer your plants are coming with me." Yeah, be like, "Better tell Johnny you can't make." It. <laughs> yeah, that was how it was. <laughs> but Dad, it's cold. It's too early. Well, bring your blanket. You can sleep on the floor. So that's what I would do. I would just I'm like five years old sleeping, and he'd wake me up. That's how I killed my first turkey. He woke me up. Shoot him! I shot a Jake. He woke you up to let you know it was time. Yep. He's like, there's there turkey. Oh. You know, I'm like seven, I think. And I shot him, yeah. I shot Jake. I did, uh, take his midday snooze. Did you ever think it was, um, was it close to backfiring? What, what do you mean? That's the whole argument people make. People say like, well, I'm just easing my kids in because I don't want it to backfire. No, it didn't backfire. I mean, I no, was I'm also, saying what, like, was that, could. was that part of the calculus at all? Like, what do you, I, dumb Meaning, it down for me. Uh, no, no, it's not, not, it's not, I need to, I need to not dumb it down and smart it up. So I'm asking a very confusing question. Um, did your, like, did like getting either, out that early, did it either like come close to turning you off or did your dad worry about turning you off by just being like, we're going, I don't care what you want No, to because do? it made it like a natural thing. Like okay. I, well, I, since I was little, I had a bow and arrow. And so I always knew that that was what we did. Like, I had no idea. I mean, for Easter, we would go to Texas every year for my Easter break, and we would they would put out like the Mexican Easter eggs where you smash them and the confetti comes out in the woods. So we would be hunting hogs. We'd be walking around, and there'd be <laughs> Easter eggs, and we'd collect them and put them in the truck. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, this is so awesome. Oh, Easter Bunny great. was here. Like a combo. It's serious. Yeah. And then like Thanksgiving, that's, cool. that's where we would go. We'd go back to Texas. It's like, I just, that was a normal for me. That's what we did. That was our hobby. So it wasn't like turning off. I think- if you start it later, like maybe when kids are in high school or maybe like late middle school when they already have that social connection and they already kind of grew up with different hobbies or sports, that's when it can maybe turn them off if you force it too much because they already kind of grew into something else. Mm -hmm. But I just, right from the get-go, I was hunting and fishing and that's all I knew. And then I got into other sports, but in high school, I got a little bit more social. So it would have turned me off if it was a little bit more pressured, but. Did you ever take a year long break? Um, I mean, when I was in high school, I was in softball and basketball, so. Slowed down. Slowed down. And I was like a little social butterfly, but I still hunted. And then I got to college and then it was like back on the grind. Really? Yeah. Where'd you go to college? I went to Illinois Wesleyan University. It's a private school in, near Illinois State. What's it called? Illinois Wesleyan. I've heard of what? Didn't like Hillary Clinton go to Wesleyan? There's a lot of different Wesleyans. There's oh. like an Iowa and Indiana. Are they I all like there. cousins? I don't know. Probably. They're like. Yeah, I don't know. They're all similar. And what kind of hunting did you do there? So I was in nursing school there, and uh, so I didn't have a lot of time, but I had a buddy, and that was my dad's friend, that let me hunt his property about 15 minutes away. So I would be in my scrubs, and I would take him off and put my hunting clothes on really fast uh -huh. and get 15 minutes and climb up a tree and nice. try to deer hunt. That's cool. Did, did That's you finish cool. the nursing deal up? Yeah, I'm a nurse. Really? But I never practiced as a nurse. Just a waste of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dang, I got these student loans. I don't even use it. At least you Oh, yeah, they're going to cut everybody loose on those that's, loans, That's man. not uncommon. Oh, my that's gosh. Uncommon. Yeah, but like a nurse, I could have done something different. I mean, I can always fall back on it. I'm very happy, but it sucked. You still, old, you still, sucked. Old, you still owe the money? Yeah. I remember it felt pretty good when I finally paid off my student loans. Oh, yeah, I've been paying And then now when they talk about forgiving everybody, I'm like, dude, a little late for that. I paid mine off. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. If they're going to forgive everybody, I want my money back. <laughs> yeah. Money like, right. why should I be penalized for having paid mine off? Then all of a sudden everybody else gets to walk? It's totally unfair. It's not going to happen. I'm just going to have to keep crying and paying it off and be like, I don't even use this. Dude, if you get yours paid off, you better send me some of that money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I paid my stuff, man. <laughs> I paid myself like an American. <laughs> <laughs> the old kind. Yeah, yeah. The old style. Uh -huh. Pay their loans. Uh, 
Well, how old were you when you got your first deer? Um, uh, I caught, I shot a button buck, and I think I was like eight or nine. Oh. With my bow. I'll never what? forget. With yeah, crossbow, really? or bow? a compound bow. Wow, are you serious? Really? Yeah, That's with amazing. a vertical bow. Yeah, I have a picture of it. My, to show it to it, what's the world come to that I have to say vertical bow? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Compound with bow, a yeah. bow. Yeah, yeah. I remember I was um, hunting with an older. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. And you recovered it. Yeah, I, I mean, it was a fifteen yard shot. I just remember he died in like a little field right in front of me. And I shot all- a button buck my first year with a bow at twelve, so he got me beat. Oh, there we go. No kidding. Yeah, and this, old, and this old man that I was hunting with, he's so nice and he was so excited for me. And he, who was the old man? Ah, uh, he's my grandpa's friend. I don't even know. He just took me. I think I just needed supervision. They're like, you, uh, you take her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, he was Good so, luck. He was so excited. He gave me a payday, and I it was like, oh. You know, I'm little. I'm like, I hate paydays. Oh, the peanuts. So I pretend to like drop it, you know? And I'm like, oh, I dropped it. And he's like, oh, it's okay. I got another one. (laughs) (laughs) I'll never forget that. Never forget that. Yeah. So young though, man. That's young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Had you been shooting? Did you start shooting when you were real little? Yeah. We still have the little compounds. It's like like this big. Yeah. Yeah. And now you probably shoot it and you're like, how in the hell? Did I kill a deer with that thing? That's yeah. that's the way I look at that little tiny thing. I think I got lucky it was a button buck. I don't need too much oomph in the button buck, you know? <laughs> well, you still got to I mean, hit I, it. I still got to hit it perfectly, yeah. Not perfect nowadays, but... Huh. Yeah. And that's like your passion today is whitetail hunting. Yeah. It's just kind of like what we were talking in the blind. It's like when you're really good at something, like that's something that I'm confident about. Like I know what I'm doing. Mm. There's other things that I like doing, like waterfowl hunting. I don't know everything. I'm okay with saying like I don't know everything about waterfowl hunting, but I like to go with my friends. But like that stuff's my bread and butter. So that's why I love it so much. Mm-hmm. And how much time do you put into it every year? I mean, a lot. I One year I, I hunted 90 days straight to kill my white tail. I didn't kill him until January. 90 days straight. Mm-hmm. Wow. That was when I just graduated college and I was trying to like make video and get into this like content creation. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to kill a big white tail. And I did it finally, like two did days. You started left. to lose your mind a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. I was just destroyed. I was the only one in the family ha- who hadn't killed one. And I was the one that hunted the most and I hadn't even fired an arrow. So I was pretty distraught, but I got it done. Were you trying to find a specific buck? Yes, his name was Mr. Perfect. So a lot of people who followed along with my um, Instagram and my socials and everything, they knew who Mr. Perfect was. And I got into 15 yards of him and he was quartered towards me. And uh, he just got spooked and ran off and was distraught, never killed him. Oh, you never got him? Nope. Where is he now? Well, my dad killed him the next year, but that's okay because he killed him and I killed his book. So we just kind of flopped. Switch swap. Yeah. Uh What year was this going on then? 2020, 2020. Got it. Yeah. And that buck died in 2021? Mr. Yep. Perfect. 20, Mr. Perfect died in 2021. He was a nine-year-old deer. Do you guys name all your deer? Our big ones, yeah. This year, we don't have any deer that we've named. So we're just kind of like, whatever steps no, out. Because no one's like, shooter. no one deserves getting talked about. Yeah. Well, there's some, but yeah, not really. I mean, there's some big ones. Mm-hmm. But there's, there's a home farm of ours that we like are... You know, my dad grew up, my family grew up on, and it's really special to us. And we're really picky with what we harvest off of the property. We're not going to, like, overabundance harvest the deer. Like, if there's a nice four-and-a-half-year-old, five-year-old, we'll probably leave him, you know? But the big bucks we killed last year were eight and nine. So they were old deer that we were after hmm. for multiple, multiple years. They kept tricking us. So that's, that's an when, old whitetail, man. Yeah, that's when we... um we named them, and then we killed our two big ones last year. And then this year, it's just kind of up-and-comers. Yeah. We call it the um, what did I, what did we say? My dad and I were hunting. We called it 100 acres, and there's just like that's where all the, the little spikes live. There's like 20 spikes running around. We're like, well, we just need to go to a different property. We're gonna let this one grow for a couple of years. At that age, they walk around looking up, don't they? Yeah, they're just they're just walking around. They're gonna stand five yards from you, and just like. Oh, no, I'm saying at eight or nine years old. Oh, oh, yeah. A buck like that knows to look. He knows to check the trees before he goes. Somewhere. Absolutely. I I was hunting this deer cup we called six pack, and he was perfect. <laughs> he was perfect twelve pointer. Okay, <laughs> he was like seven years old. He, this doe is in the middle of the rut. She came right under my stand, five yards. I'm like, holy shit, he's coming. He came, stopped fifteen yards, and was just looking up, <laughs> and then just turned around and walked away. I never got a shot at him. He's like, there's a lady in that tree. And then I killed him the next year in the rut. So I was like. 
Uh, I love white tail hunting. How do you come? Like, who, who who gets to have the name? Who gets? To I don't name my do dad. The names does. come natural. My dad names them. I'm like, all right, let's roll with it. Got you. Yeah. yeah. Do you get a lot of deer showing up in the rut that you don't see? Yes, that's why we love the rut. We have a couple pieces that we hunt that you know, but butt up next to neighbors yeah. or um some reserves and that's when it's just like game on like this time of the year that's my favorite places to hunt too because you just don't know and i love places where there's no trail cams yeah so because you, you don't know so what you're going in there for. Little, yeah the, like, i love yeah. yeah i think trail cameras honestly ruin it for you like, like they ruin it like you you're constantly looking at them yeah. i mean i'm constantly looking at them yeah. Yeah. i'm like where are they popping up so when it's an area where i can hang a new stand or get in a climber and i'm like i have no idea what's been coming in here i can look at the tracks look at the sign and then who knows what's coming coming to me you know yeah. i feel like they kind of prevent you from going hunting too because if you don't have anything on your trail camera Absolutely. are you gonna go hunting and sit in that stand yeah, Absolutely. well, you I can don't miss. A, uh, well, you can miss. You can miss some. Like I got a. Bu- I almost got a. Bu- like I, I, th- I thought of this the other day. I was on my in, in driving my jet boat down the river, and I was like, "There's nothing sounds better than your own jet boat, <laughs> and nothing sounds worse than someone else's jet boat." Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I feel like trail cameras. Nothing better than your own trail camera. Nothing worse than <laughs> yeah. someone else's. Yes. Trail <laughs> yes. Yeah. You'd be like, you know, it'd be sweet if I was the only guy that knew about these. Yeah. Because I like, I love setting them out and looking at them. The only time I wind up with a problem with them is if you're in one of the states where you can use cellular and you're hunting and you got one and you're hunting with one of those people that's just constantly telling you what's going on. Like, yeah. look at what happened while you were, right? Yes. The minute you left, you know, if you'd have gone left and not yeah. right, look what, a, and after a while, I, I just, that's great. I, I you can't tell me anymore because it, it's it's detracting. Yes, from my experience. Exactly. You know, and it's like it'd be like when we had babies. I'd always want to know what they were going to be, right? Like boy, girl, whatever, because they know, and I didn't want to. I don't like anything. Like, why would the doctor know? But I don't know. So people would want to be surprised. My wife would be like, we should be surprised. I'm like, well, but I can't be surprised because that guy knows anyways. Now, if he didn't know. That I didn't know, that'd be fine. But if he knows, I need to know. Yeah. And so the whole trail camp thing, even when you tell someone to stop telling you, you still know they know. And then you're like, okay, fine, just tell me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's no. the only problem I ever I, have with them. I mean, it's nice. It's just like you talk about trapping and putting them out. It's kind of fun to see what's coming by and what you get trapped. Well, whatnot. that's just that's just wildlife observation. Well, I enjoy that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And then when it comes to, oh, um, where's all my big bucks? It just It does ruin it a little bit. Nothing shows up. You're like, well, I'm not going to go there. Maybe. Mm. I yeah. don't know. I, I love. It's a love hate relationship. I just got back from Wisconsin on my parents' property. We don't have any giants walking around this year, and it. We have some nice ones, but it definitely was like, like man, like because you were I, trail camming and you never got them. Right. Yeah. I mean, we we were trail camming deer that were that like shooters, but usually there's like on camera we have. A one or two giants and we did not have that this year so i wasn't like as excited when i got out there to sit in the tree stand because yeah. you know the only was there yeah and, but the thing that ke- kind of kept me going is like you never know it's the rut yeah and deer can show up but if we didn't have those trail cameras i probably would have hunted a little bit harder exactly well yeah. let's revisit something it wasn't in this it was in our last studio so i can't say it happened right in this room but we remember we had Dustin Huff on, yeah, who killed the Huff buck, so biggest whitetail killed in the in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Right? Is it second biggest in the world? It's big. Mm. It's got so. What know. is it? Biggest biggest whitetail? Typical, right? Biggest typical. Yeah, the biggest typical whitetail in the lower in the U.S. He never got a picture of it, but he had cameras out. Other guys got pictures of it, but didn't tell him. Oh. Gotcha. So once he killed it, he realized every Tom, Dick, and Harry around town <laughs> had a picture of it, but weren't telling anybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, eh. And he didn't <laughs> know about it. Yeah. That's so, awesome. The power so move. it's like, you know That's what I mean? Power move. So power you could be move. like, wow, well, there's no point in going out. But dude. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I still went out. Yeah. I, and I was like, there is a chance to have something like that happen in the area we're at for sure. But when you don't have that deer showing up like we have in the past, like big, it's just, you're not quite as yeah, no, gung-ho. Honestly, this year though, 
I think not this just this year, but every year just during their rut, like we were talking, it's the best time because whenever I just see a bigger deer moving, I'm like, the big boys are moving. It's time. And that's when I took Jack out with me where we didn't have any trail cameras. I had a neighbor call me and say, I've seen a drop time buck in one of those fields. So I'm like, all right, we're just going to go over there and rattle. And we had two giants come in. I'm like, game on. But that's the best time. There's no now, why, why didn't you shoot those? Because they weren't big enough or you didn't get a no, chance? No, I didn't get a chance. Oh, the so big one came in. Uh, the wind was swirling. He was in front of a bunch of tall corn stalks. And I was shooting mechanical, so I didn't want to shoot through the, the corn, obviously, because, you know, one nick, it's going the opposite direction. But he was a five on one side, big two on the other. He was funky, but he was very heavy. And he was probably like a five-and-a-half-year-old deer, maybe six. Got my wind. Smart. He circled. You did? Yeah, I was so upset because he was 30 yards, but he was just in front of that corn, and I wasn't about to chance it on a mechanical broadhead and try to wound him or anything. So if you'd have had a, fi- a fix, you'd have just shot right through that corn. If I had a better opening. I didn't yeah. want to, you know, with a mechanical, you can have like a little tiny sliver of something and it just, You're you don't screwed. know. Yeah. No, I don't want to be crass, but when you, um, when you say like, like, are you like a numbers person? Uh, like, like score numbers. No, like we don't score a deer. Okay. And I've never scored any of my deer. Huh. So it just it feels like a big one. Yeah, I think it's a big I think it's a big <laughs> I think it's a big deer. I'm like, mass, he looks like he's a big body, doesn't look young. Got it. I'm shooting him. Arrow's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, you're not like he looks like a one seventy. I'm gonna no. hold out for a one seventy five. No. That's, that'd be pretty big for whitetails, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty. I mean, so, we're in El- the Midwest is nice, so we yeah. got some big bucks. But Don't I'm, I'm happy with 150, 160. I got two tags, so. Got it. Yeah. Never put a tape to one. Mm-mm. I don't even know how. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I have a little pamphlet that shows you how. We scored my boy's antelope the other day, his pronghorn. But I, I, I go years without scoring something. But I, whenever a friend of mine wants to score something, I get real happy. I just don't personally ever score anything. But antelope are super easy to score. Yeah. I, I can see anything. Jimmy getting way into that score. Way into it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, way into that's it. Did Jimmy Steve score his buck from this year? No. But he wants I'm me so to score I'm surprised it. he's he not wants on me that. To score it. At that age, I was telling these guys earlier today, at that age, they're real into um, like him and all the kids at school that hunt. <laughs> They're real into like who got what with what caliber rifle. Yeah. So it'd be like, um, I'd love that though. Oh, no. That's like Caden got a buck with a six five Creedmoor. <laughs> Where? I don't know. <laughs> How big was it? I don't know. <laughs> it's just like the whole point. The whole point is yeah. what it was. Jimmy got one with they're a like, 300 they're... wind mag and it didn't have a muzzle brake on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're all like gun riders. <laughs> Performed flawlessly. <laughs> That's awesome. I remember, I remember a dude bragging to me one time. It was a dude in Canada bragging to me that his kid killed an elk with a 243. Mm-hmm. I was like, wow, that's something. And then later, I met the kid was talking to him. He shot it nine times, yep. which the dad left out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. no. And the kids, uh, you know, they're just like, yeah, this is what happened. Oh, yeah. He's like, I, I shot it nine times by the time I was all done. I'm like, oh, the old man just didn't tell me that little detail. <laughs> That's the thing I have, too, with my kids. It's like, would a blank kill a blank? Always. Could you kill a bear with a twenty two? I'm like, you kill a bear with a butter knife. I mean, if you got enough time, yeah. <laughs> it's holding still, you know. <laughs> so yes, but no. <laughs> now, uh, you do a little duck hunting, mm-hmm. but opportunistically, mm-hmm. we we share. We're opportunistic duck hunters. We are. Yeah. I think we're similar with a variety, of, though. We harvest a variety of things. Yeah. You know, some of it opportunistically, and some of it. You put it like this. He's like, it's just not where I spend the energy. Yeah. Mm-mm. You'll go, but it's not where you put the energy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's more of just, I have a little bit of free time or I killed my whitetail and I can kind of hang out a little bit. My grandpa wants to go. Grandpa and I will go out. Got or it. if it's snowing, it's like 10 degrees, right. 10 mile an hour winds, snow's coming in. Mm. I'm going to go duck hunting mm. with my with my And you go we'll hunt what kind of stuff? And what kind of stuff? Or no, what yeah, kind like of stuff? what kind of like you guys field hunting? You guys yep. got hunting flooded, sloughs or what? flooded timber or flooded um, corn? I see. Huh. So a lot of flooded corn. That's yeah, nice. so it can be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it can be pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Now, are you a squirrel hunter? Yes. You yes. grew up squirrel hunting. Yep. I've taken Jack, who's sitting behind me, 
um, squirrel hunting like three times already this year. Yeah. yeah. You guys just creep through the hardwoods or what do you guys do when you're hunting? Creep through the hardwoods, listen for them jumping tree to tree and shooting with my 22 or my <laughs> air gun. That's the noise of them jumping tree to tree. They're jumping and they're barking and they're cutting. Oh. I sound redneck. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> that noise, like oh no, I got to I hadn't done it in a while, but I got to spend a spend uh, five nights and four mornings sitting in a tree stand recently, hunting in oaks, you know. Yeah. Deer feeding on acorns and feeding yep. on uh acorns. Acorns. Acorns <laughs> and uh persimmons. And um I kind of forgot about that, you know that noise, like when I was a kid you people would take two quarters. Oh, well, no, and rub them. And it's supposed to be like a, like, but. The squirrel? Yeah, but just, you can, like, sitting in that tree stand, you can hear them chewing a nut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you hear yeah. them. Not yeah. only just them calling, you be hear, you hear like. Yeah, like, like chewing a, on like a like black a, walnut or yeah, something. Yeah, you'll hear like off in the woods. You're like, what is that? And you realize, yeah. oh, it's a, it's a squirrel, like, opening a pecan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or and you can hear his teeth. It's, it's so quiet. Or they're just so. You know, they're fired up because there's a deer running underneath them just barking their heads off. I'm like, perfect. Yeah, it's uh, the number of squirrels you see deer hunting gives you a, a, a lesson about how you ought to hunt squirrels. Yeah. Like if you really wanted to hunt squirrels, you'd go and be as serious as a deer hunter. One thing that I do want to try, I don't know if you've ever done this or anybody else has, but with dogs. No, we've done a bunch of that. Yeah. I've never done that. Yeah, I don't have, I don't, when I say I've done a bunch of that. I've I've been the guy that gets to tag along shooting all the squirrels. Is it fun? Oh, it's the best thing in the world. Is it cool how the dog works? Yes. So they just tree him like a like a raccoon or something? It's the best thing in the world. They Did don't. It... It's different than a raccoon because you normally you got usually got to look for them. Yeah. But they hear them. They smell them. They see them. Whatever. And they're on and they're on that tree. They're attacking the tree. And then sometimes you got to go in. And uh, here's my contribution to this discipline. I've talked two of these people into the importance of carrying binoculars because then you got to scrutinize the tree to find it laying up there. Mm-hmm. And, They're uh, hiding. Yeah, and my friends will scrutinize it with their 22 scope, but I would scrutinize it with binoculars and do better. Yeah. But sometimes it's like, oh, shit, there's a squirrel. But sometimes you look and 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 determine that it went into a hole. Um, and then you yell, in a hole, let's go <laughs> in a hole. That, that's, that's the Southerner yelling in the hole. Um, it's so much fun. All right. I'm going to try it. Oh, it's the, it's like on a good day. Seth's been out. Oh yeah. Oh, it's the greatest thing. It's in the real world. fun. Clay Newcomb's got squirrel dogs and my buddy Kevin Murphy has squirrel dogs and we'll go out with those squirrel dogs. And I even had him bring his squirrel dogs up to where I grew up because where I grew up, people didn't hunt them with dogs. And I thought that it would be the greatest thing in the world because the squirrels wouldn't be whatever. They wouldn't have evolved with that level of pressure over the last, you know, 100 years yeah. or whatever. Made no difference. And then everybody got poison ivy on that yeah, trip got from the squirrels. Because <laughs> oh, those geez. sons of bitches were lining their nests with, with poison ivy. You know, when, you know when it's glued, when poison ivy, st- where it sticks to the tree mm-hmm. and yeah. it makes that hairy, mm-hmm. that like hairy coating? Yeah. They're harvesting that to line nests. We're hunting late season. They're harvesting that to line nests. And um, the first thing that happened, someone took a picture of a squirrel and they're holding the squirrel. You know, like picture that you're laying a squirrel on your arm (laughs) and you're holding the squirrel and you got like his head Mm -hmm. coming up your, the inside of your wrist. Yeah, in your forearm. Yeah. And they did this for like a picture. And a while later, it's like, was that Zucker? Yeah, it's a while later, there's like a squirrel outline of poison, <laughs> <laughs> like a crime scene. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. got bad. I mean, I wound up going down and getting. Uh, I wound up going out and getting on steroid treatment. It's bad. that bad. Everyone got it. Bad. Oh no! Well, bad. I don't want to do that part, but definitely with the dogs. And yeah. then you're looking at pictures, and it looks like you're basically like stuffing squirrels down your pants and stuff. <laughs> like once you knew what was going on, you look at the pictures, you're like, "Ooh, that was dumb. <laughs> that, was, that was dumb." The time I had the one around my neck, that was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't really think about that little detail. <laughs> no, it's it's fun, but the way we mostly hunted when we were young, and so like in Michigan, September 15th was the opening day. And when I was a kid, it would end December 31st. And September 15th, we would, I'd be allowed to skip half a day of school. I could skip a full day October 1, which is archery opener. 
I could skip a full day November 1, which is water trapping opener. I could skip a full day November 15th, which was rifle opener, but I can only skip half the day on the squirrel opener. And you'd go out, and at that time, all the leaves were on, and you just go into a good area and sit and listen for like what you're saying, hearing acorns mm-hmm. raining when they're for beech nuts. Mm-hmm. And you'd get under them, they wouldn't even know you're there because they're the leaves, the foliage is blocking them. And then when the leaves fell, it just became hard, 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 hard. But that's the beauty of the dogs is when the leaves are down and the squirrels are paranoid and they're all dead from hawks, you can still clean house. Yeah. It like really makes your season run. In fact, doesn't Murphy, he doesn't like to do it until the leaves are down. Makes the dogs. Because when the dogs bay up, you need to be able to find the damn squirrel. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's one of those guys that doesn't carry binoculars, so. Doesn't carry binos. He can't see him up there. If it you have binos, fun. you can see him. It is fun early season, though, when you're just slowly walking oh, while they're cutting. It. So much fun. We I used to go into the White River bottoms, and you could, you know, you get a limit pretty quick. And they're so good to eat. Love them. Love and them. Do you, how do you clean them? Do you cut them in, this, in the middle of the body, or do you go from the tail? Yeah, we call it pants and shirt. Pants and shirt? Okay. Yeah. And I know I can, I clean them from either pants and shirt, or just from the tail when you lift them up. Tail skinning okay. them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. People that are good are good. But when you mess one up, it's no fun. <laughs> yeah. Kevin Murphy does it. He tail he tail yeah. skins. Did you, did you grow up tail skinning, Seth? Uh no, I was shirt and pants. Yeah, yeah, shirt and pants. Yep. Yeah. How did how did you get into barstool? That's what I want to know. Like you were your dad was obviously had the media side of things going. Yeah. So you were involved with that, but. Like, how did that all go down? So, um, it's r- really funny. I was in Oklahoma. I just shot up my Oklahoma whitetail. And that night I was talking to my cousin and I was like, man, I really want to do something on my own. I don't want to be, um, I, w- I still had a following, but not. From your dad's stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then I had, you know, I picked up some people th- throughout the way. And I was like, I just don't want to be Tim Wells' daughter. I want to be Sydney Wells. I want people to know me for me, not because of my dad. And I was talking to my cousin about that the night before, and I was just like, I don't know what to do. I got to kind of figure it out. I was I had no money. I had a little bit of saved up through working throughout college. Um, and it was so crazy because that next day, Dave Portnoy tweeted, was like, wanted to host a Barstool Outdoors. I didn't see it. I had a ton of people send it to me. And I was like, <laughs> we, we, are, we I don't want to get into details, yes. but we are woven into the we, story. We are. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a weird ass story. Yeah. Are you going to tell me why? We can talk about it I'll later. I'll tell you later. <laughs> okay. Actually, yeah. Not, let's not, talk, not, not, let's like talk any, not like we, wait, no one, like, I, no, no one applied. We're wait, just woven into okay, the story. Because I, I have some questions after the cameras are off, too. About yeah. this story that I'm trying to tell you? <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh-huh. You're not going to say it on air? No. Okay, we'll talk about it. <laughs> okay, so, anyways, so then I just literally sent an email and just some like YouTube videos. And then, um, I met with Gaz, which is like Dave's right hand man, and I just told him what I do and like what I would want to do. And then I met with Dave, and he it was like a ten minute conversation. He was late because he was in a Jenga tournament. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and then he was just like, "Okay, cool, yeah, if that's what you want to do. Roll with it." And that was it. So, so well, he's like, kind of like an animal. He's like an HSUS animal rights guy, though. Dude, he does not care what I do. Which is the crazy mm. thing. Um, I wanted to, I wanted, like, I always wanted to have, like, a debate with him about, because I, th- I know he's into, like, HSUS and stuff. He means, not, not, not the kind of humane society where you take care of dogs, but the I other kind of humane he? society. So I feel like he is, isn't he? I don't. I thought he's, like, an animal rights guy. Is he not? Not really. Uh. He just doesn't want to see it. He just, he uh. loves animals, but he so does. So why? He doesn't love them as much as I do. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> more. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like Feidelberg, I don't know if you, John Feidelberg, he mm-hmm. told me, um, he's one of the main guys who's been along for long, around for a long time. He said, he wrote a blog one time of an alligator eating a turtle and he, Dave was upset with it and had him take it off a long time ago. He's like, you, you, you have changed Dave because, I mean, I post so much hunting. I mean, that's all I do. Yeah. And he doesn't. And they never mess with you. No, and nobody will ever say like, you can't do that. <laughs> So did That's anyone cool. like have any like idea of like your background like before you went and inter- like they didn't know who your dad was they didn't know any of this stuff they didn't They'd- know anything about hunting or fishing actually I had a couple of the Barcelona people already following me um, so one of them was his name is Brandon Walker he followed me but he's from West Point Mississippi which is where the Mossy Oak headquarters are so he's friends with the Mossy Oak guys so I think he knew of me and he likes to fish um, and maybe a couple of other people but not not really no they didn't nobody really knew but now it's kind of fun because i have a series called out of office which 
all my coworkers want to come and hunt and fish. They nice. have no idea, cool. but now like hmm. I just my one of my coworkers, his name's Dave, call him White Sox Dave. He shot his first deer with me. And we like, you know, he brought all the meat home yeah. and it was just like that really exciting. Yeah. So, so you're being a teacher too at the yeah. same time. And then I'm going on a Ducks Unlimited hunt in January. They invited us to go and I'm going to bring two of my other coworkers who've never duck hunted. Cool. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So, I mean, I feel like I don't put pressure on anybody either. Like I'm not ever going to do that if you're not co- comfortable with it. Like I'm not going to make you do anything. But, yeah. but if you're interested. The door is open. I'll teach you. I'll help you. We won't do anything crazy off the get go. I want you to like it and not be freaked out. Yeah. Um, just like going squirrel hunting, mm-hmm. like that kind of small thing. Just that ease can, them into it. Yeah. And they're all interested. I haven't had anybody be like, what the heck? And you guys will film a lot of, like Jack will. <laughs> yeah, we film it all. Yeah. Come along, film it. Why don't you introduce Jack back here, poor guy? <laughs> okay, this is Jack. Jack Orlandi, come here and say hi. Hello, meat eater world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's really fun. I, I think I've introduced the sport a lot to Barstool and like the audience and been able to show our coworkers who may have not maybe wanted to hunt or mm-hmm. even thought about it or maybe even have disagreed to actually enjoy it, mm-hmm. which is really fun. So Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I'm How long have you happy. been with them? Three years almost. Cool. So three years in February. What were the questions you said you wanted to ask us when I said I was going to tell you a story later? <laughs> well, I want to talk to you about it later. About what? I'm not going to say it. <laughs> you can ask me a question. Maybe we can go on. <laughs> Start to play warmer and colder. Here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to do it. <laughs> we got a standoff <laughs> going on here. <laughs> like, who's gonna cave first? <laughs> That's a question. Standoff. Now, did your life change through all this stuff of like, of bar stool getting sold to a casino and then the casino giving it back? Did, did this change your life at all? No. Uh, at first, I was scared because sure. Penn owned a hundred percent of it. You know, for a second yep. before they get it, gave it back to him for a dollar. That's what? when I got nervous. Sure. Yeah, Dave bought it back for yeah, a dollar. Yeah, hear all this? Yeah. So that's that's nope. when I was nervous because... <laughs> yeah, you can, anybody can read it, but they, yeah, they, I'll, they, I'll, I'll read yeah, yeah, You don't need to. It's not going to change your life. Right they, now. um... It was just, you know, we were more of a corporation. They were going to, you know, insurance, and I was a bigger brand with sponsors, so it's You like, didn't have insurance before that? We did. Mm, I don't know. Maybe they're, I'm insured. Probably, right? I would no, hope so. I, I mean, feel like, like something you, you like. Know. You have like your own <laughs> no, health insurance. No, that stuff. I have health insurance. So uh, I'm saying like, they were scared that somebody was going to get shot on a shoot. Oh, that kind of insurance. Mm-hmm. But I thought you meant like your company had an insurance. No, plan. no, 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 no. Yeah, I got it. Um, liability. just like liability. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's hard. I, I told them like, I hunt every day, so you can't have somebody on site with me every day. Also, you're gonna have somebody in a tree stand with me. <laughs> You want to get an insurance man excited. <laughs> that's not yeah. gonna work. <laughs> no, so not not the insurance changed. man be like, dude, I've seen the numbers. I'm not going to that tree. <laughs> <laughs> the actuarians are just burning the pens up. Yeah. No, pen pen is great, but I think we're all pretty happy. Dave's we're all happy. Dave's has it 100. percent So do you find out stuff just by reading the news? You're like, oh, that happened. No, we have like meetings. Yeah, okay. But sometimes, yeah, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's like, is this good or bad? I don't know. <laughs> no, we got we got it all figured out. Everybody talks to one another, which is nice. Yeah how how connected are you with the the off the, the main office is in New York, right? No, New York City. Did it move? It's moved. Yeah. Oh, it so is. well, Chicago, there's like right? two main ones now. So Chicago and New York. Oh. Okay. Um. So so some people are there. Dave's. I don't know what Dave's plan is. I think he's still in Miami. And then Big Cat. And some of the other guys just moved to Chicago, so we've got a big Chicago office. And I'm still connected, but this time of the year, I'm not really in the office because I'd rather be out hunting and filming. Yeah. I can't really so when you're in the work. office, you're in the Chicago office. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. How many people work there? Oh, geez. I think we have like 300 employees now. Really? Whose studio is better? The studio space. Podcast don't, studio. Don't ask that. You oh, I mean, the Chicago answer. office is just like- It's way better than the studio. I haven't been in any of the studios yet because it just opened. Let's let Phil be the judge of this. But the Chicago <laughs> office is gonna is badass. I mean, we got a full court basketball court and. No, I'm talking about the studio. Probably, this I bet one. part of my takes probably gonna be the best. Well, listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> I was recently in some really. They don't fancy, got a muskox. I was recently nope. in some really fancy studios. Yeah, they had a muskox. They you got know. a buffalo. The mm-hmm. buffalo shot in the head. Well, the bull hole through his head. <laughs> no, black bear. Mm-hmm. Couple coyotes. They got a squirrel uh, bottle heater. 
What about the Leatherman? They need that, though. They Do they got the Leatherman actual Leatherman used that we got weights line. and fish? Uh, this is the best and... studio. That's what I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the best but studio. What happened? <laughs> we recently had a wake-up call. I think I told you about this earlier. We went to some fancy studios. Yeah. And and um, and um Phil felt like he was getting studio shamed. Oh, no. Remember that, Phil? I mean, I, I, I wasn't mad. It was a very comfortable experience. Yeah. <laughs> but then later confided in me that some of those studios weren't all that. Oh well, I mean Can, the the spaces themselves are are spectacular, but the microphones just uh, yeah. this I'm is not a great space. Names, I I'll, love I'll, the coffin. I'll say in uh, this isn't in Phil's words, but some of these studios were all hat, no cattle. Mm. Mm. The cattle being the mic. Mm. Wouldn't you say, Phil? Yeah, mm. it's, yeah. A good, it's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Is that, the hat, is that exactly how Phil said it? These are some it? damn good mics. <laughs> I think Seems like my, a key piece for a podcast. And then he spit a big dip stream out. <laughs> <laughs> I think my seat's heated, Phil walked though. in and said, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what's the, some of the stuff? We were talking about some of the stuff you'd like to do um, that you'd like to do in the future, like trips you'd like to go on. You mentioned how you kind of have a sort of an interest in South America. Yeah, well, I've been to South America, so I've already like you duck hunt, Oh, you know, duck no, hunt. it was not that. You brought up fishing Dorado. Yep, yep. You, you, that's interesting. To I would you. like to do that. What else is interesting? Neil guy. We talked about shooting Neil guy down in um, Texas. Do you guys know what Neil guy is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think just the story about Neil there's, guy is really one interesting. Skull right down here. Oh, there is. Hold it up. Grab that chili. So, if you don't know, if you're listening, what a Neil guy is, go Google it. It's really cool, and or the not, story no, is very tell, interesting. Tell him none of that. Just go to YouTube and look at what the, right now. Yep. Yeah, it came like that. Yeah. We skinned it, and that was under there. <laughs> <laughs> Meat eater. No kidding. <laughs> Stamped right in there. That's a nice. We're one. all surprised. Did you shoot that? That's a deadhead. Oh, it is. Yep. It's a nice one. Well, I shot a nice one. I, I did. I, I accidentally got a nice one. You know when you accidentally get a nice something? Yeah. Never happened to you? Yeah, and you're like. <laughs> Oh, this is good. Like you get it, and everybody's like, "Holy shit!" And I'm like, "Oh, uh, great!" <laughs> you know? It's the only thing I really bad. I, gotta, I <laughs> really bad ADHD, but this is a story. You know, like coos deer. I never killed a coos deer. Would love to kill a coos deer. Um, my dad and his buddy went to Mexico to shoot coos deer, and his buddy shot his first coos deer. It was like 120 inches. So he got an accident. Oh, 125. Nice. So one. Yeah. And he's like, my dad was, you know, like, "Holy!" Everybody was, "Oh my gosh!" And he's like, "Oh, is this good?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like a accidentally get a big one. Yeah, I accidentally got a that big That was an accidental. Guy. So I got accidental. a nice one. That's accidental. a nice one. That was found as a deadhead. That's a nice one. Yeah. Um, I have my other one. My my other accidental nice one is at my house. But if you want to go hunting coos deer, you can come hunting coos deer with us. We go in January. You can't come this January, but next January. Next January. I'm, <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, where at? We go to Sonora. Okay. Hmm. I would love to. Really? I've never killed one. I really want to. Don't shoot a big one. <sighs> I'll try not to. <laughs> Don't accidentally shoot. I probably won't even know. You're going to be like... We just tell you like, that is huge. <laughs> and if you don't measure it, you'll never know. Yeah, never you know. won't yeah. measure yeah. it. Yeah. case scenario. You just be like, they told me it was giant. All yeah. right. They told me it was giant. No guy. Uh, what other what other kind of dream things? Like cool trips you want to do? Um, a grizzly bear. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't killed an elk. I need to kill an elk. Mm-hmm. Um... I don't know. There's a lot, probably. I don't know if I have a desire to kill a sheep or not. A caribou would be cool. I think I just need to start out west, though, and do like the smaller things, like the coos, and that's smaller, but the coos deer, mm-hmm. the elk. Um, have you done anything else? in Alaska? I've never done anything in Alaska, like a blacktail. Oh, yeah. I like to do that. I just would love to kill a grizzly, too. I think I'd be really nervous. I had a black bear climb a tree with me when I was younger, it scared me. Yeah. Because so I think I'll be really nervous to see a grizzly up close, but I really want to do that. And with my bow. Didn't your dad spear a grizzly? Yeah. I took him like like 10 trips or something. It was a lot. Jeez. It was hard. You know, you got to get it right under you. I can't imagine that. Yeah. I would freak out. Yeah. Yeah, that's an alpha dog move. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was going to ask you a whole bunch of stuff about And a dad. wolf. He speared a wolf. But he's no, speared, I would he, like to kill a wolf. Oh, I don't know if he's he's never speared. speared but your a wolf. dad speared himself. He speared himself. Yeah. Do you mind talking about that for a minute? Yeah, I can talk about that. So with the spear, he's always really good at making sure. I mean, that, those things are you know this this like this, and it's super sharp. You know, it goes right through an animal, right when they're underneath you, die instantly. Super deadly. With him, when he keeps it in his tree, he always makes sure it's somewhere safe. If he gets out, it's not going to fall. Well, he wasn't 
thinking he just climbed up this tree in Africa. He dropped a GoPro. Well, in Africa, they have really good sense and they're really smart. So he didn't want to keep that on the ground. So he jumped out of the tree. And when he did, he shook the tree oh. and it went right through, hit his ball cap, went right through his leg. You talked about the tourniquet earlier. He took off his uh, pants, put his belt, made a tourniquet. And um, he barely missed his femoral artery. Mm. Jeez. Lay there for six hours. His water and his walkie-talkie were up there, but he made sure that he stayed um, conscious. He didn't want to go. He felt his body going into shock, so he didn't want to go into shock because if he went in shock, could have been deadly, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, and then he's in Africa. You don't know what's going to come around. Just smell of blood, and he's just wounded. Um, yeah, so he stayed there for six hours, and he p- ended up pulling the spear out of his leg. But um, they found him. He went and got s- stitched up. He didn't have surgery or anything. Um, but they gave him these really, really like potent antibiotics. Mm-hmm. It's illegal in the States, but in Africa it was not. So they gave him these antibiotics. And when he got back to the States, the doctor told him that it's he's lucky that he got those antibiotics because they pretty much killed everything and saved his leg. Yeah. From what because he could have wow. got like whatever. Infection. Else. I mean, he yeah, killed a sure. bunch of animals yeah. with it and antibiotics and the antibiotics in um the states probably wouldn't have been as strong. And he could have just lost his leg from infection. That's crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. I just thought of the thing I was going to, I was going to mention the thing. I was going to tell you an interesting thing. Um, and then I remember that the person that told me made me swear not to tell anybody. Doggone it. All right. Well, we can talk about that <laughs> off, off camera. But no, the spear, like, I mean, yeah, he spears a lot of things and he's really good at keep making sure. I speared a black bear when I was younger in Canada too. So we're always making sure it's safe because those dang spears i mean they're deadly it goes on an animal and instantly that's the one thing that's great about them is it didn't they kill quick so kill when, you, quick. when you killed one with a spear is it a weighted spear like what do you mean like uh is the shaft weighted is it shaft like uh lead or embedded in it or he steel would know wood? he would know more but i i don't i don't know to be honest i don't Jerry's, know the whole diana dynamic of the spear you know, there's a really i don't want to say it's a good there's a documentary and I don't want to say it's a great documentary because it just it covers something interesting, but it doesn't cover it in the per, in a perfect way. But it covers these Indonesian harpooners that they still they still fish dolphin. Um, I don't mean like mahi mahi, but like porpoises. Oh, okay. Um, manta rays, sperm whales, with harpoons, and they don't use a harpoon gun. And they don't use a weighted harpoon. That harpooner goes overboard with that harpoon. Are you kidding me? No, he's up on the bow. I mean, there's a and ton he of. Just fo- goes- he's on the bow, and when they get on that whale, that dude drives. That dude lands with the spear to land and place the spear into the dude, water. That's all crazy. All in on, he's in on the whale. That's another power play. <laughs> that is, <laughs> That's another that power is play. That's crazy. And these guys, wow. like, they're, it, they are whalers. And they, they try, the, the movie has this sort of like a little bit of a tenuous, it has this sort of like tenuous environmental message that I wasn't totally, I, I need to spend more time on. Because it was basically that this culture hadn't practiced sustainable fishing practices and had like destroyed their fishery. And that drove them to being marine mammal hunters. And I a little bit uh, question that because that's a tremendous amount of know-how. Yeah. And I just couldn't picture that that's really, that, that, that this wasn't more of an ancestral behavior. It was hard for me to pick up that in the modern era, yeah, it's someone like, like sort of crafted this harpooning culture that's because the fishery, I, I just like, I, you know, I don't know that that's right or wrong and I'm sure eight people will write in and set me straight on it. <laughs> but uh, he lays that out. And I remember a little bit thinking like, I need to spend more time on that. Mm. Well, we all have that in our, like our blood instinctually, like hunting, mm-hmm. whether you're a hunter or not. Dave, I don't know if you agree with that. Sure. But yeah. When just... I'm sitting there jigging halibut and a, and a humpback comes by. Oh, well. <laughs> no, no, I never do. But I always comment on it. You think about doing it? I'll say to my kids, can you just imagine? <laughs> Because we carry a harpoon for landing, you know, you just, it's basically like a, it's, you're basically gaffing. Yeah. You're gaffing a fish that's on a hook, but it's just, you just deliver the gaff. Yeah. With a harpoon shaft. It, it's not like, you're not like yeah. harpooning it. You're like, what do you call it? It's just like a t- 
toggle head that comes off a harpoon shaft. Yeah. So you just poke it. Yeah. Anyhow, I'll always, always comment to my kids. Can you imagine sticking up? <laughs> It's crazy. And then just going for a ride. <laughs> yeah, you need a bigger <laughs> skiff. <laughs> oh. A little more rope. I would never do it, but it always, like, it, something deep in me, um, something deep, some evil, deep thing in me wonders about what it would be like to, just to... Yeah, but you don't know. I mean, <laughs> it'd be awesome. Just to try to help. To be you honest, know, I don't know if I've ever I can't even finish the evil. sentence. <laughs> you don't I can't know if it's evil, though. I can't even finish the sentence. Oh, then maybe it is evil. <laughs> you hear me? I keep going, just to, can you imagine? <laughs> just deep breaths. Just to, one time. <laughs> did, did, did. Sydney, Phil's Goodness. throwing up a sign that says three minutes. You know, I was trying to keep that on the download. That's why I held up a sign without saying it. <laughs> yes, I held up a sign that said oh three gosh, minutes. Oh gosh, it's already... No. Tell, people, tell, people, uh, tell people how to find you. Okay, you can find me all over social media. You can spell my name S-Y-D-N-I-E. Which is how you spell it. Which is how I spell it. Okay. Spell it right. Sydney Wells um, or anywhere on Barstool Outdoors. So YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all of the above. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me. Today was a good day. No, we had fun out duck hunting. Yeah, and now we're going Goose hunting. back to Illinois. Yeah. So. Well, I'm not. You are. Well, I am, yeah. Hopefully you can see me with a big old buck. Yep. And we both owe big thanks to Brady Davis from Flying V. The best. For, uh, we had a great time. Basically telling us where to point and shoot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shoot and over clean, that way. And clean it up. <laughs> clean it up. Yeah. Oh, and he's still going to go clean up. Yeah. yeah. We need to pick our own decoys up. Yeah. I did kind of help set them out. I was talking about, I mean, <laughs> you, guys okay, were big help. You, you said that, but I was talking about like, you know, our bird clean up when we're missing and he's just like, don't oh, worry guys, I got it with this up. 10 gauge. I thought you meant the fact that he now has to go and like pick up empty shells and decoys. <laughs> yeah, sorry, you didn't Grace. Pick up? <laughs> no, we were on a bit of a we're time crunch. Yeah. So. He's very time conscious. Dane too. and I are headed back to go pick up the spread. All of his other attributes and he's time conscious. Yep. Such a good, great guy. Mm hmm Get you where get you your ducks, <laughs> get you where you need to be at noon. You gotta be on time in life. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's right. Thanks everybody. <laughs>